SD70M flared radiator from Atherin Genesis in both UP and Norfolk Southern schemes. This is a DC, DCC, and Tsunami Sound equipped locomotive. So let's see what you get for an MSRP of $299.98 in this Atherin Genesis SD70M flared radiator. Let's get started. So here's the two boxes. You've got the SD70M UP, SD70M Norfolk Southern. Sometimes you get this cardboard box depending on your who you order through. Now we're going to do the unboxing and I'm going to talk a little bit while I do this in the essence of time. We've got, I've ordered four of these, um, all with sound. You get the warranty here, you get the breakdown of the SD70 series, you also get an operator's guide here talking about DCC and sound CVs as usual, warranty information. Ten pages, looks like they kind of split the operator's guide and the exploded parts diagram. You have your Ather News Flyer talking about signing up for Facebook and YouTube stuff. And the Horizon Hobby limited warranty information. Now let's go ahead and get into the locomotive itself, which I had upside down here. It's in the standard box from Ather, nothing special. Done with packaging, nothing changed with packaging. Slider on out here. Get it out of the box. It's got hard plastic surrounded by this soft plastic stuff that protects the paint from the hard plastic. And then of course you have whoop, handrail foam to keep those handrails as straight as possible in shipment. So there it is out of the box. SD70 M Floyd Radiator. Let's take a closer so look. So starting from the top, we're going to work our way down as we look at this M cab on the UP version. You've got the Sinclair antenna. You've got the CAN EOT antenna here, a separately applied grab iron up top on the roof. You've got the high mounted headlights that are still incandescent bulbs for those of you who are wanting to know if it Atherton possibly changed, they're still incandescent. The number boards, which are not backlit number boards, you've got the separately applied windshield wipers here that are real nice and thin. They're not those thick, bulky plastic antennas, or I mean windshield wipers that you find on certain things. You have the sand filler hatch, you've got separately applied grab irons all on the nose. And here you have on the front of the cab door, you have a separately applied handle here that's nicely done. All the separately applied grab irons up front. You have the actual grab irons to get up the ladder. You've got operating ditch lights. You have MU hoses with silver tipped ends. You've got the McHenry plastic coupler. So a lot of folks like the KDs, uh, I guess Ather owns the McHenry couplers. Okay, let's take a look at the side of the locomotive. Here you will see uh, quite a few details, including the cab sunshade and its separate track, the cab windows with the small cab side mirror here. The cab windows are tinted with a nice, uh, I'd say frosted tint. It's not a jet black like you'd expect from the later models of the Overland Models versions of this. You've got the cab number right here. Below this we can look at some truck detail. You can obviously see the jacking pad there, but there's also some nice truck detail as well. Working our way back, you can see the dynamic brake intake here. You can see the dynamic brake fan. Now this is the late dynamic brake intake. And right below that, right here, are the battery box doors. So you can see those. The beginning of the handrails, which are still plastic for those of you who are curious about that. You can also see the beginning of the 5,000 gallon fuel tank. You can see the stem mounted dial type fuel gauge and just a lot of nice detail you can even see the bell here separately applied detail on this model now right behind the dynamic brake grills you can also see the grills uh, that are the central air intake area right here and right above that is the dustbin hatch but we'll get to that when we look at it above so let's continue on now one thing before i do continue on one thing you may notice it's a spotting feature between the sd70 m flared radiators and the sd70 max is the fact that there's no blower duct on this left hand side here. So that's one thing that's different uh, than the SD70 Max. So for the, those of you looking for a blower duct, it doesn't exist. Before we get too far back on the locomotive, I do want to show you something that's pretty cool, and that is the offset turbocharger doors. Now, the turbocharger area is right here, and you can see these doors are actually offset from the rest of the mold. They actually stick out a little bit, you have to get just the right angle to be able to tell, but it's two doors on each side. 
Looking at the other side of the locomotive, same thing. Let's go ahead and swing to the back. You can see that the handrails, again, still plastic. People ask me all the time about durability. Durability is decent. The stanchions aren't popping out, but you do have to be careful. They're fragile. They're thin. They're prototypically thin. You're going to have to be careful, or if you don't like them, uh, you have metal handrails on other models uh, to purchase as well. Now I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. You can see the safety tread on the walkway. That's all the way around. But as I zoom out, we're going to be looking at a few things on the back. The first thing that you may notice here is the prime air dryer. That is another detail part that was added. You've got the actual two panel radiator intake grills here. So those are the intake grills. It almost looks like, I don't know if it's overspray or what, but it almost looks like it was a little bit weathered here on this grill. But back to the two panel radiator intake grill in the radiator area, you have three separate fans here. Those are the phase two, two speed Q fans. So they operate at two different speeds um, to cool the radiator section of the locomotive. You've got all this nice separately applied grab iron detail back here. You've got that other jacking pad down here by the truck detail. So really nice detail overall. You got the coupler cut levers I didn't mention on the front. Another thing I missed on the front was obviously the anti-climber area, which is right above the snow plow and that EMD low snow plow. But we'll take a look at that when we swing things back around and get the full 360 view. Now that we're on the back here, if I can get some stability, you've got more MU hoses, McHenry coupler, coupler cut lever, Separately applied grab irons, more detail back there, sand filler hatch back there, you've got more incandescent lights on the back. Brake wheel, more of the same detail along the side here. I'm not going to spend much time because we have a lot to cover in this review, a lot more than I usually cover, but let's go ahead and take a quick view of the top of the locomotive and move on. Not a lot of stuff to talk about on the top that hasn't been covered already, but there's some things that you can see in the close-up views earlier. One thing I don't mention hardly ever is the lift rings. These lift rings are all in place, none are broken. They've got these tiny little plastic lift rings and they did a really good job basically making sure that those are somewhat durable so they don't break because they look like they just snap off. And they are durable, I've kind of poked around at them. You've got the actual Nathan Air Chime K3 air horn that's featured on this version of the locomotive. These are 2002 era is when these started showing up. In UP's fleet, you've got the exhaust, the dustbin hatch, stuff we talk about all the time. One thing I do want to talk about right here on the cab roof is the fact that you could easily take off the Sinclair antenna, the CAN antenna, and basically put on a nice PTC antenna array. So that one's up to you, just kind of gives you an idea of things you can do to modernize this locomotive. There's warning labels all throughout this locomotive. I think they've done a really nice job. I'll try to zoom in a little bit so you can see some of these lift rings. You've got four here, for example, and other lift rings around the locomotive. But those are just some of the features of this thing that makes it really nice. Going back to the front real quick, a couple things we missed. Nice red anti-climber below snow plow here. So really good details on this locomotive and it looks like it has some good weight and we'll take a look at that in a moment. All right, you Norfolk Southern fans, I didn't want to let you down and I wanted to show you the version of the Norfolk Southern ST70M. That's the only other paint scheme Atherin offers. Lots of differences. I'm just gonna mention a few. Some stick out like a sore thumb, some don't. You can see the different antenna configuration up top. That's an obvious one. You've got the fire cab versus the M cab. Now, FIRE actually stands for something. It's Fully Integrated Railroad Electronics. It has nothing to do with fire or getting out of the cab because of a fire. It's a display inside, a new display that helps with safety and things like that. I don't really have time to get into it in the essence of time. But those are just a couple differences. You've got the turbocharger doors where the UP version has two offset doors. This actually has three offset doors on each side. We talked about that. And you can see how they... Uh, actually sit out a little bit from the mold of the locomotive. We've got the Nathan Airchime K5 air horn back here. So that's obviously a difference from the K3 air horn. You've got a four panel radiator intake grill back here. So there's four distinct panels versus the two distinct panels. 
You've got tab mounted LSL indicator lights. The fact that this version came out uh, in 2003 for Norfolk Southern versus UP's uh, 2002. You still got lift rings and a lot of details that I can't really get into in the essence of time because I'm already running behind on my time frame for this review. So let's go ahead and continue on with this review. So you NS fans didn't get a good close look at your locomotive, so I've decided to use the NS version against my UP loving ways to go ahead and listen to some sounds. So let's get started by applying track power. I also want you to pay close attention to the lights to see whether you like the shade or not of these incandescent lights. So applying track power will automatically start up the locomotive. See the incandescent bulbs. It looks like the right ditch light's slightly brighter than the left ditch light. I see that and I see it in the camera viewfinder. So let's go and listen to some sounds. F0 handles the headlight, obviously. Let's listen to F1, the bell. F2, the horn. Now that's a combination of F2, the longhorn, and F3, the shorthorn. Going to F4, the dynamic brakes. Going to F5 handles the light. F6 is really not applicable here. F7 the dimmer. You see the lights got dimmer. F8 is mute. F9 spill release. F10 is coupler. And the 11 and 12 are steam and there's other CVs and things you can change obviously. Now let's go ahead and mute this. I want to say one thing, the UP version we'll, we'll do the running on. We'll see if the horn sounds any different, see if the ditch lights flash. Ditch light flash rate's good for Norfolk Southern and is accurate for Norfolk Southern because Norfolk Southern has flashing ditch lights. We'll see if UP version of this locomotive does or not. Okay, just to show you super quickly, you probably can't tell from that distance, but when you blow the horn, ditch lights don't flash on UP, that's correct. Nice extra step that was done to program those tsunami decoders correctly for the road name. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and go with sound on this. 128 speed steps so you can hear it move up, hear it kind of rev up a bit. So here we go, one speed step. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And switch direction, crank it up a bit. That's nineteen, twenty, twenty four. 25. Now I'm going to mute it because there is a little bit of noise from the engine, the or the motor in this case, but you can hear a little bit of noise. It doesn't do much lurching, it's pretty smooth, but it has gotten a little noisier over previous gen Genesis models I've heard. Okay, but let me see if the NS version is quieter. So that's a little quieter. 
may be just which model you get, who knows. Let's try real slow speeds. You can see the speed control at one. Pretty good. So I just want to take a quick second and look at the differences between this version and the Overland Models version. I encourage you to pause this video to take a look because I don't have time to go over the details. But one thing that really stands out to me is I think Overland Models nailed, I mean absolutely nailed, the UP Yellow. But if you look at Atherns version, there's a slight hint of green in there, or maybe just a little bit of washed out. But you know, UP Yellow is very interpretive. There's lots of different versions of UP Yellow, and manufacturers never can get the right one because it's shade and it's wear and all these things that come into effect on the UP Yellow. So. Other differences are a little bit of thicker details on the Overland models, that jet black tent that I love with the nice metallic riveted detail windows. That one thing to keep in mind is there's a lot of differences in these locomotives and they aren't even the exact same version of the locomotive, so you've got some differences to deal with there. But overall, pretty cool. Um, OMI made some metallic differences here and metallic accents, but overall I'm pretty impressed uh, with the Atherin, but I think I'll be keeping my Overland models. I have four of them and I love them. And, and Overland models, the detail is a little larger too in some areas, but overall if you want a real good look, you can pause the video and take a look, you know, go full screen, etc. So we're talking about differences between Overland models and the Atherin one, but one thing Overland models will do a little better is the weight. But more importantly, let's take a look at the weight of the Atherin locomotives here. 1.22 ounces, or 1 pound, 2.2 ounces, I should say. 0.517 kilograms, 517 grams, 18.2 ounces. Okay, let's go ahead and take the Atherin one since we have it here. Make sure there's not much variations. 18.4 ounces. 1.24 ounce or one pound 2.4 ounces 0.521 kilograms 521 grams so there you go those are the ranges you're looking at for these locomotives let's look at a pull test so we're about to do the pull test we've got the overland models in the background the Atherin version up front so you can see a little more color differences a little bit of more green a little bit more washed out um, but just showing you the color differences between overland models while we get something else done let's go ahead and start on the pull test Cranking it up here, we've got it set at ounces. We've got 3.5 ounces, 3.7 ounces. And this MicroMark pull test meter has not been actually locking on the ounces. So we're looking at 3.7 and 3.8. Probably because of an inconsistency, it doesn't lock the ounces on. But right now we're sitting at 3.7 pretty steadily and now it's back to 3.8. So you get your point, 3.8 ounces pull power for different units here, 0 0.109 kilograms, 0 0.22 pounds, 3.9, 3.7 ounces, it keeps on jumping around. But you can say about 3.8 on average ounce pull test. Well guys, that wraps up the review of the Atherin Genesis ST70M flared radiator with DC, DCC, and sound. Now, the sound is Tsunami, MSRP 299.98. A lot of great details on these locomotives. A couple of shortcomings, a few more if you're really into the detail and you could pick up on the HD video things that you don't like. Ultimately, decision is up to you. Speaking of price, let's talk about discounts. Uh, online retailers have some heavy disc discounts, especially for pre-orders. They've been pushing pre-orders lately. Trainworld.com, 30% off on pre-orders and then once they're in stock I think it drops to somewhere in the 20s but I'll put a link in the description below for the pre-order price or the links to get uh, these items through trainworld.com now I've been with trainworld since the beginning of model railroading my very first order online was placed through trainworld for a lot of ro rolling stock so they do a great job but there's other ones out there like your brick and mortar hobby shops that you may frequent or online hobby shops you may frequent uh, that you may want to check out I've actually ordered for UP, one Norfolk Southern version of this from several different online hobby shops just to kind of see what the customer service is like, what the prices are like, what the shipping costs are like, etc. So it's up to you. I've got a lot of money invested in these uh, with five total at about two and a quarter a piece, 225 a piece. 
you know, we're looking at $1,125 in this locomotive, so I definitely have money invested. Luckily, I got my hand on a couple uh, about three or four weeks prior to release because they're due in March. But I've got a lot of money invested in this. I'm pretty pleased. I think I'll keep all my versions and I'll keep my Overland Models ones as well for a little bit of difference uh, with four total Overland Models ones. So there'll be a lot of SD70Ms running down here on this new layout. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time right here on my channel.